John here from RipeWave Audio, and today we're going to look at potential ways of transitioning from an AV receiver to an AV processor without having to buy all your amplifiers up front. And this is a common problem. To make that investment, to go from an AV receiver to an AV processor, especially with the new immersive systems where we have you know, 7.x.4 and on up, you're talking 11 or more channels of amplification that you now need to replace that was built into your AV receiver and don't have access to afterwards. Now there's a few workarounds uh, that could work. Some AV receivers, not all, and not many of recent days, have a 5.1 or 7.1 input. And in that case, you could take your AV processor and some of its 5.1, 7.1 channels, not the immersive channels, and send them to the AV receiver that you're replacing and you're all set. Now the challenge there is that you most likely want to use your best external amplifiers for your front channels. So that means of let's say a 5.1 or a 7.1 input, you're not using the first three. So you're left with the two surround channels or the four surround channels uh, that you can do with that 5.1 or 7.1 input. And that may help you very well. Uh, and then you're using let's say if you have a two or four channel on your height for the immersive, you can use external amplifiers for those. Oh, you're just using your old AV receiver for your side or rear surround or both. That's provided it has a 5.1 or 7.1 input. What do you do if your old AV receiver that you're replacing doesn't have a 5.1 or 7.1 input, then what do you do? Well, we then look towards the HDMI capabilities. This could be your workaround. Uh, it can be a little tricky because HDMI is a bit fragile and it doesn't play well when you're trying to put multiple devices all in stream here. So it's, it's challenging enough if you're going from a source to your receiver to your TV, but now you're introducing yet another component, an AV processor in that whole chain, and it has to sort this all out and work properly. And oftentimes you will end up with either no video, no audio, or both. And there's many conditions, not just the HDMI, that can throw this all off. We got it to work between our Cinema 50, which is Marantz's latest uh, AV receiver. It does not have a 5.1 or a 7.1 input, and our Emotiva RMC1 processor. And so how did we do this? Now, we've tried this several different ways. We've had many ways fail. Our ideal way is to go from a source like an Apple TV, first to the RMC1, do all its processing, supply to as many speakers and external amplifiers as it can from that processor. When it runs out of external amplifiers, we then also have that second output on the RMC1, another HDMI, that we run down to the Marantz Cinema 50, and the hope there is then the Marantz, with a pass-through signal, can then decode it as well and use that for the height channels, which we don't have amplification for. The problem is we haven't been able to get it to work in that direction. We can see actually a video from the RMC1, but we're not getting audio uh, transmitted or received by the Marantz receiver. So we try this the other way around and we have success. So in this time we take the 
Apple TV, HDMI out to that, to the Cinema 50 AV receiver, and then from the output, another output from the Marantz Cinema 50, the Zone 2 output specifically, the monitor output from the Marantz, we can only seem to get video coming out of that, not audio. Only time we've had success is coming out the Zone 2 of the Marantz. Now if we're going to use Zone 2 of the Marantz, we have to make sure a few things are happening. First, we have to turn on Zone 2 or nothing comes out Zone 2. So we turn on Zone 2. Um, we want that to follow the, the, the input. And so Zone 2, we want to also set to be the same source, that same Apple TV. And we want to make sure through the general settings on the Marantz that the HDMI audio is set to through. We want to set it to through. There's other settings there, such as the volume level. I think those are ignored. I think that really only applies to when you're coming out the analog outputs for Zone 2. It didn't seem to make any bearing to whether I set that to um, dynamic or hard fix to a certain value. Uh, it always came out the same on the other side. And then we take that Zone 2 HDMI output from the Marantz and we bring it into an input on the RMC1 and we set that to auto decode. Now it's going to show up as surround on the RMC1 and what I'm going to do is we only have the Atmos ceiling speakers wired to the amplifiers built into the Marantz. Now the Marantz thinks it's configured for a 7.2.4 system, but we only have the dot .4 at the end wired to it. And going to HDMI whatever, in my case 1, and then playing it. Now it's going to take that in and it'll say, even though it's an Atmos coming in from the Apple TV, it's going to see that as surround. It's going to properly decode the bed light layers. So we're going to get the front three channels, the side surrounds, and the rear surrounds, plus the subwoofer, low frequency effects, and the RMC1 is handling all that. And I have amplifiers for each of those channels. And that complements what the Cinema 50 is doing for the height channels. So I end up with the 7.2.4 system just powered by one receiver for the heights and one receiver for uh, and a processor for everything else. Now I have to manually balance the ceiling channels with the other. So the Marantz, I have to turn that up to a level which I think balances well with the RMC1. Probably the best way to do this is using an external test tone uh, to a degree to find out how you need to balance these, you know, because the, the same setting, a negative 10 dB on a Marantz is going to come out different than on the Emotiva with different amplifiers. It just is. So you could do it with some test tones coming in, or you can just play it by ear, and if you want to hear more of the Atmos height channels, you turn that up a little bit. And if you don't want to hear as much, turn that down and you manually balance it. And this gets you through the period until you can buy more channels to make up the difference. In this case, I'm trying to get four more amplifiers so I can then power my uh, the height channels uh, and do everything from the Emotiva RMC1 processor. Now I'll take the worst amplifier I have and put those to the heights and I'll take the next best amplifier and put that to the side and rear surrounds and I'll put my very best amplifiers on my front stage. And there you have it and ultimately I'm going to do front wides from this so I'm going to need another two channels but the Marantz Cinema 50 can't do the front wides so for this interim period uh, we don't worry about the front wides 
but we still end up with a 7.2.4 system. Another way we could have done this is utilize ARC or eARC coming back to, to this. So we could take the source, the uh, Apple TV in this case, put it to the TV for one of the non-ARC or eARC ports and then come from an ARC eARC port on the TV to the other processor or receiver and have it all work out. The challenge is that my TV is so old that although it has ARC, it doesn't know how to interpret the Dolby Atmos. So it's not forwarding anything back through that ARC or eARC channel. Well, in this case, it's only ARC with Dolby Atmos, even though I set it to Dolby on the TV. So those are your options. And if you want to use this hack while you are trying to transition from your receiver to your processor, you may have to try a multitude of different things out. Make sure you have good HDMI cables. You may have to power everything down to the unplugged state. Usually, if you really unplug these things from the wall, give it a few seconds, plug it back in, that's probably the best chance after you're making your settings, after you put all your cables in the place, Give it a try. If that doesn't work, swap the order instead of going from processor to receiver, go from receiver to processor, or try the ARC eARC method. In each case, repower everything down, power it back up, make sure you have the right settings. So, in my case, when I was going from the Marantz to the Emotiva, we had to make sure that zone two was turned on and that we were doing pass through to the Emo Tiva. If you're doing something through your TV, you also want to make sure you're not using PCM, you're using the bitstream pass-through that is possible. And that's in any of these cases, you don't want to set things to PCM because then you're only getting two-channel audio, not multi-channel audio. And the other thing that I had to make sure is on the Marantz that my sur surround mode was actually set to Dolby Digital and rather than a stereo output or something like that and then I'm getting those height channels as they should so there's a lot of things to check but it is possible and this will avoid saving some money of course though going through it this way is not ideal you have two separate volume controls one for one for the processor one for the receiver you'll probably be annoyed by this so you're going to be really anxious to get those additional amplifiers to really do this right and have everything handled by your new processor with its own discrete amplifiers. How would you go about this? Would you bother with the transition? How would you do the transition? Uh, that feedback would be useful to the Right Wave Audio community. Put your comments in. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Consider going to our Patreon channel, www.patreon.com slash ripewave. You can always also hit the thanks button and do a one-time donation. That is appreciated as well. And you can even hit that bell icon, even if you're not doing any donation or, or subscription of any sort. Uh, still do that. And as always, until the next video, keep evolving your audio experience.